know it took her all year to get here, but winter finally arrived. This is the most snow we've had all year, I think. Four or five inches of snow drifting in the, in the roadway. So we've been kind of spoiled. We haven't had any snow, so we get it all one shot, and we think, oh my, we're never going to make it. I used to wear snowshoes out through here. Still does make it a lot more difficult. I don't know if it's these rubber boots that I wear because of the snow and the slop, the extra clothes. It sure does make my back ache. Doesn't do it so much on the dry ground. Take a look at this. Now those things used to fill up. I mean, when we've had the big storms in 03 and we had the snow in 2009, 2010, we'd have snow drifts clear over these fence posts. So this ain't nothing, but you can see that that snow blows out of that field down across dumps over that little bank right there and just fills this roadway up so we can't get our trucks out here we couldn't get any machine out here it's not so bad now we might be able to but generally you can't but uh used to walk along that field right there you see there's no snow in that but even sometimes the sometimes the snow gets deep even in the field you know gets fills this up so you gotta walk way up in the field up here wear your snowshoes until you get a good path crunched down keep sinking and picking them back up but we haven't had a winter like that in a long time so don't, I'm not complaining too much I read a thing this morning that said our first antibiotic was called mold juice. And now we call it penicillin. And I don't think that would be a big surprise to a lot of us. I think most of us know uh, where penicillin came from, how it was founded. But it was interesting that they would call it mold juice when we have a real fear and mm, aversion to most molds today. And certainly... Uh, something like penicillin has done wonderful things for the world, so we should consider that in our in our thought process. I think I would define me and my family and our thought process, our theory. Even though I have two, doc two daughters that are going to be nurses or are nurses, um, our thought process is to not overuse medicine. Not to avoid it like the plague, but to use it wisely. Not to overuse antibiotics, not to overuse uh, drugs and treatments of any kind, but how can we naturally come over this? How can our body be prepared to defend itself uh, against things that we're going to encounter. So uh, my caution to anybody is, you know, work with wisdom. Um, a friend of mine, uh, he was older on in his years, but he would go to the doctor and they would prescribe something to him. And he had, he had a general distrust of doctors because of his past or his family's past. But, uh, he, he would be prescribed something and he would take it at their level for a while and then he would cut it in half to see what was actually happening to his body. Now, I don't know what the wisdom of that is, but I think doing a little research, doing a little reading, a little thinking of our own would give us some indication of whether we should um, take a medicine, how much of it we should take, how much of it we should rely on, what real and natural things are available to us to to help us cope or heal with certain ailments
And we would generally have that same theory, same thought process with, with most of our animals also. Um, the animals that we raise for our consumption and our friends' consumption, we try to keep them on rotated pastures. E even our breeding stock, um, we try to keep on rotating pastures and move them around. And you can really see the problem when you start to restrict an animal or confine an animal. Our sheep will do remarkably well as long as their pasture is moving. As soon as we have to restrict them to a specific area, that's when parasites become a problem. And we try to develop uh, strength in our flock that they wouldn't, they wouldn't need wormers because as soon as you get a sheep that's dependent on wormers, then you're just going to be battling it forever. Much better that we keep a rotating pasture and a rotating group of animals. We have the cows and the sheep, different parasites, and uh, they kind of help to kill each other off. So most of the year we have zero concern for parasites. And if we can develop this, it's a little difficult in the snow, but if we can develop this to where we don't need to confine them, we don't need to uh, keep them in a smaller area and feed them in, in a regular spot, we won't have any problem with parasites. But now, because we have to bring them in to the shelter, we don't, they don't really need shelter, but we bring them into the barn, closer to the hay, we feed them there, and they're all congregated together, and it just is a just continual cycle of just being on the same ground over and over, allows the parasite uh, to, gain, to gain a foothold. So, the stuff that we eat, we try not to give any medicines. We try not to give any any antibiotics, anything that we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't want to have ourselves. And 90, 95 percent of the time, that's great. But I think we would use the same thought process. An animal gets sick. How can are there are there remedies that can be used that can help us without going to manufactured antibiotics? then we'll use those and if there aren't then our last ditch uh, effort our last case scenario is to use uh, a manufactured um, a manufactured drug or or antibiotic or or control of some sort now the interesting part is trying to live in a space that occupies two worlds because in one in one way in one world we pasture raise our animals which allows us the freedom to not need as many antibiotics not need as many control mechanisms um, we move them around every day you'll get to see me in Madison doing that with the chickens and the cows and the sheep and uh, maybe even pigs uh, if we if we get that far along uh, maybe even the turkeys we may try some of that uh, with them as well same thing with garden plants I mean we, we just generally have that theory but also not so much to cut our nose off to spite our face if we see a problem then we're gonna have to try to address that in some way um, Greg Judy reminded recently of his area and his situation that he does vaccinate for black leg um, because it would be terrible to be arrogant and say, I'm not going to do this, and then wake up one morning and everybody's laying dead in the field. So we're going to use common sense, and we're going to do our best to, you know, try to try to use natural remedies and natural controls. But living in two worlds, our show stock, on the other hand, because they're kept in a more confined area, they're fed differently, they're cared for differently. In, in many ways, they're a lot stronger and in some ways they're weaker because they're more susceptible to you know they're getting more feed they're getting more nutrients in that regard maybe you know they're probably like me a little bit too fat really but overall they have this more controlled diet more variety more mineral probably available to them so they get a lot of benefits but on the other hand they're they're right there uh, in a confined area more susceptible to parasites and you have to watch over them a little more so we do have to because of because of what their purpose is their purpose is to go out and show them and to you know 
mold them into what the industry standard uh, says that that it's looking for. So we we really, we really live in two different worlds. We live in a world where we raise things off the ground, we we eat things that are grass fed, and we also enjoy uh, the 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 challenge of learning how to feed a Hereford steer or learning how to feed um, Hereford heifers uh, to grow up to what the breed association uh, is looking for at any given time. And, you know, that's a big challenge. There's a lot of people doing that, but we're just learning. We're figuring it out. We have a good time with that. You see me measure out all this feed. That's just, that's just for them. That's just, uh, we balance out their diet, give them a certain amount morning and night uh, they get different things in their feed to help them grow in specific ways that we are less concerned about with our field stock, our breeding stock. So you'll you'll see a lot of that, and you'll get a, you know get an introduction to a lot of that. But all this conversation started with just that idea of penicillin, mold juice, and what our relationship to antibiotics and, and drugs, pharmaceuticals, ought to be. Now I certainly think we are blessed to live in this country and we are blessed to live in a world that has had so many advancements. But I also think there are probably, a, you know, a lot of bad characters out there that try to misrepresent um, the, the neediness or the effectiveness of drugs and antibiotics so we have to be wise and, and have good understanding and the, you know what brings us about today is two, you know, one is the little thing that I read this morning about mold juice and the other is uh, listening to a radio program from a couple days ago where they uh, talked about you know an amazing uh, amazing bipartisan moment in American history where everybody, House and Senate, everybody agreed, everybody voted to order the Biden administration to declassify documents relating to COVID and the Wuhan lab and uh, the origination of COVID. So that's a process that'll play out. And it's, I don't, this is no political conversation. Certainly, I have a political stance, and so do you, and that's fine. We can live in that world because, you know, at the base level, most of us uh, walk by each other. Most of us could sit down at the dinner table and, and enjoy dinner together without uh, wanting to come to fisticuffs over our politics, um, but there is a lot of split among some of us sometimes, but really, the conversation needs to be our trust in our government to lead us correctly. Because all through that COVID uh, debacle, um, yeah, a lot of people got sick and quite a few died. I don't know how many of those could have been spared. I don't know how much of that uh, uh, was necessary. I think there's so much double speak and so much, um, so much contradiction that we just can't believe anybody. And I think today, in this world, a lot of us just have a general mistrust or distrust of, of, of our government. We, we should, you know, with all the advancements that we have, and this being a government uh, of the people, by the people, we should have a relative, you know, security and, you know, allowing them to tell us what is, uh, what is, good and what is not but i think in the last hundred years or so at least we have gone drastically off the rails with that so now we can't even we can't even trust them when there is a global pandemic and there's this rush for a vaccine should we take it should we not take it are we being forced to take it i'm glad that we still have the freedom to make those choices and make good decisions um whether or not whether or not mold juice is good for us
1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, uh, Lest anyone who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. And I think if you remember back to yesterday, I was talking about my mood swing and my mood change and overcoming that. Um, and really, no analogy is really sufficient. No, no analogy really holds up, but despite the beauty that I might see in the snow falling, especially you got those fir trees down there and the snow's just falling through them and the snow's, you know, probably four or five inches deep here now and it is beautiful. The house sparrows are looking for shelter. They like to come in the barn. I have a brush pile out there. They're, the other birds have gone completely quiet because they have realized the error of their ways and said, mm, we didn't check the right weather forecast because we thought spring was here. And really probably so did Craig. So uh, that's an interesting conversation to have also because I think you have been able to witness and, and maybe I would be able to witness it in you too, but you've been able to witness the the joy of a warm day and what the sun does for my body. And I have noticed this over the years and it's become more and more apparent that as winter drags on and there's less and less daylight we get to february and you know the days of the short days of really just taking a toll on me and my mood is bad my energy level is bad um, we get some of those sunny days and it just brings the life just to the surface of me and we get to a day like this and and it's just kind of, oh, you know, I enjoy cold weather. I, I thrive better at 30 degrees than I do at 92 degrees easily, easily. But it's harder to, I thought about, oh, I got to get all these clothes on. I got to trudge through the snow and just all that effort. So you can see uh, when I'm, if we're using that analogy for that 1 Corinthians 10, 12, on the nice sunny day that you witnessed from me last Monday. Last Monday was just fabulous, just beautiful, and just felt so energetic at the end of the day. And then yesterday and then today, it's just kind of, uh, you know, from a weather standpoint and trying to, trying to take that to a spiritual realm, I thought I was standing pretty tall. I thought I was doing really well. And... Uh, take heed lest he fall because the snow has returned and my spirit has taken a beating because of that. Now, apply that to your everyday living. There are people among us who just think that they have it all together, that they think that they have, they have received enough of God's grace, that they are doing so well, that God has blessed them so well. Uh, they they think that because life is going so swimmingly for them, or that they think so highly of themselves, that nothing could go wrong. Lest anyone who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. See, uh, Charles Spurgeon puts it like, uh, it makes it an oil lamp analogy, that there must be a constant flow of oil in, in the lamp to keep the light burning. And if the oil runs out, the lamp, the light goes away, the, the flame goes away, and all that's left is smoke, and that smoke is noxious. And that's what happens to people who think that they are standing in the right, that they've done enough, they've received enough. I just want to receive more of him daily. And I think I feel that more and more every day, more and more every day that I just reset myself and, and come to this greater understanding that none of the material things are going to be ultimately satisfying. None of the pleasure things are going to be ultimately satisfying. When I am at most peace uh, and when I am in, in, in most joyful characters, when I bring myself to him in fullness, and I will. I allow that to overtake my being. I I need to resist, like yesterday, um, um, bouncing too high, lest I fall. Um, not saying I shouldn't be joyful. I should definitely 
be joyful, but I need to be on the lookout and just be constantly receiving His grace. There's, uh, there's never enough. It must be constantly flowing. It must be constantly, I must be in a position to receive it more and more all the time. And never closing off to that. Take heed lest I fall. Take heed lest you fall. We just we just want to we just want to be in a position that allows us to experience his peace, experience the joy that he's he's brought to us in life. And and not to be closed off from that and not to be in those moments when grief comes our way or uh, tragedy comes our way or struggle comes our way that we crumble. No, it's in those moments that we are most strengthened because he, he has, we know that he has promised us eternal life. We know that he's promised us things beyond this world. If we're not clinging to that, I don't know what we're clinging to. You know, in fear of sounding a little too silly, it really is a beautiful day. And I still yet enjoy getting a little frost in the beard. I still enjoy that bite of that cold on my fingers. I enjoy that kiss on my face. I was made for colder weather. And especially at this point in my life, when I'm probably 30, 40 pounds too heavy. He's my friend. Although, if you catch how the wind is blowing my beard, that's a little less appealing. But, nonetheless, it's beautiful. Friends, just have a wonderful day. Enjoy each other. Enjoy your family. Seek God's will in your life. Love you.